Welcome to Okaloosa Today, local news and information. Connecting the communities of Popolta Beach, Destin, and Okaloosa County. Welcome to Okaloosa Today on Cox. I'm Doug Rayner with the City of Destin. Today's show you're going to see updates from Destin, City of Fort Walton Beach, and Okaloosa County. Today's Destin segment is going to include a message from the newly elected mayor, Mel Ponder, and he's here today with me to talk about the things he's seeing, why he's here, and, and the things he's looking forward to as being mayor. Awesome. So Mel, thanks for being here today. Hey Doug, thanks a lot for having me. Well. You're our new mayor. Yeah. Um, you've you've started off with a lot of things going on. Lots <laughs> happening right now. You yeah. didn't walk into a to a to a quiet situation. Yeah. Um, most of it is really good. And, yeah, absolutely. And we're glad to have you here and look forward to your leadership and views as we move forward. Thank you, Doug. I'm very honored to be here and serve the city in this capacity. I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, the city uh, what we can do through the city over the next four years. Well, good. We're going to talk about some of that, but part of having you on the show today is to, now, you're very well known in the city of Destin, that, <laughs> and, and we, we understand that, but part of this is to let everybody know just, just who you are, who sure. is Mel Ponder, who is Mayor Ponder, and, yep. and, and we'll just kind of go into some of your background and history and, and move forward from there. That sounds good. Um, so let's talk about where you grew up and, yeah. and where you went to school. You're an Auburn fan, right? Oh, he's easy now. No, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm Florida State now. There you don't, go. Don't come on. Well, you know, if we have to go back to the national title, no. <laughs> my my father-in-law is a big Auburn fan, so I definitely love uh, the Auburn Tigers and been to several games. But I grew up in Ocala, Florida, which is down in central Florida. I was born and raised there, so I'm a true Floridian. Um, went there through high school, and then when I finished high school, I m went to Tallahassee, to Florida State. Um, had a choice. Uh, I grew up a big Gator fan. Had a choice to either go to Gainesville, which is 30 minutes from home, Tallahassee, which was, well, three hours from home. It's like, well, I'll go to Tallahassee. And so I went up there and just uh, got involved in the school and had uh, really enjoyed my education there and becoming a Seminole. And so I finished up there in Tallahassee. Um, and then uh, my wife did as well, but we didn't meet until we were done. Um, but lived in Tampa a few years and got rerouted up here after that. And your wife, Mona, you yeah. guys live in Destin. How long have you been here? We've been in Destin since about 97, 98. We were in Pensacola. We moved up to this area in 92. And then my wife's family had some retail stores, which had a location in Pensacola. So we moved over there and lived for a few years and had a chance to move back in the 97, 98 time frame and took advantage of it. Well, good. And you've been here long enough to be almost considered a native of Destin. And <laughs> I know with um, your connections here, you, you, you feel that way because you're, you're very close to the community and the city yeah. and, and all the life inside of it. Absolutely. The community is important to me. I think the, the city, the structure of our city is comprised of, I, I equate it to family. Uh, whether it's a married family or a single parent family, I, I just firmly believe that once you kind of moved into that 32541 zip code, you became family to Destin. So therefore, uh, if that's a part of you, then you're part of me. And so I want to see us all move forward together. Very good. You mentioned family. I know yeah. you have, uh, you're, you're a proud father and have oh. some children. Tell us about your kids. Amazingly, amazing gift um, to my wife and I is our, our three kids. I've got three children, um, Preston, who's 19, uh, my son Casey, who's 17, and we have a daughter named Grace, who's nine. And so uh, they're truly a blessing to us. Well, good, good. I know family is important to you. That's Absolutely. something that we're going to talk about a little more yeah. as we as we get into to who you are as a mayor. Yeah, um, yeah, let's talk about your work experience. And you're you're a financial guy, which yeah. is, is good because you you'll be able to help the city as we talk about yeah. finances. But well, so yeah. so what do you do for a living? Well, I do a few things right now. Um, obviously, mayor um, takes up a good bit of my week. I also run a um, it's called a marketplace ministry called Business Empowered. We've done that in the city for about three and a half years now. I uh, do some financing as well in addition to that. Um, but uh, main focus is uh, business and power to the mayor's role. Uh, I was a finance major at Florida State, so I came out and went straight into banking. Um, and between then and now, it's been a few years since I graduated, but between then and now, I've worked for um, I'll just, uh, four or five Fortune 500 companies, been in management with uh, probably half of them, uh, strong, stronger um, desires in finance and sales, I guess, combination. Um, but yeah, the honor to work with Bragg at, at the city of Destin is going to be excellent because he's already top notch. And so to come under his leadership would be outstanding to help him if I can. I don't know if I can <laughs> at all, but he's done so well already. Uh, but definitely a passion of mine to help um, from an economic stand for, standpoint for the city of Destin. Yeah, and we appreciate that. We appreciate your insight and, and certainly look forward to working with you in, in that capacity. Oh, thanks. Um, 
let's talk about you becoming mayor. Uh, yeah. You were on council before. You, I was. Tell uh, us about your experience on council back in 02 through 06. Yep, 2002 to 2006. Um, truly honored to serve the city at that point in time. Didn't know that I'd have another opportunity to serve again. Um, but uh, when I was there, uh, Craig Barker was our mayor, and what an amazing gift he was, as well as our former mayor, Mayor Sievers. I got a chance to serve alongside her as a council member. Uh, but I served four years, truly enjoyed getting my feet um, uh, even further into the community at that point in time, um, and then kind of went on the sidelines for a little while. Um, and then um, when Mayor Sievers unfortunately chose not to run again, uh, she was such a gift, um, it created an opportunity to come in behind her and serve. Um, uh, you know, in the wake of her, her departing, I. I um, I don't know if I, if I could ever uh, do what uh, Mayor Sievers or Mayor Barker did, but I'm hoping I bring a different capacity to the table uh, in the role of mayor. Well, they, they both actually left really great footprints oh, and, and, and really... <laughs> I'm and, hoping and, they take their shoes with them. Well, <laughs> you know, you, they, they set the stage for somebody like you to come in and, and really run with the projects and the, and, yeah. the, and the things that they set up. And, really and we'll even talk about some of those things a little later, but okay. um, you talk about filling shoes. You know, you bring a lot to the city of Dustin. Just your attitude, for one, is something that's very positive. I know our staff has seen that, and okay. we hear that from our residents, so we appreciate that. Good. What yeah. made you decide to get back into politics since you've been out since 06? Well, um, I, one of the, the things I enjoy to do is serve people. And um, I'd love to see our city, um, one of the biggest heartbeats of mine is to see the, the city function as, as a unified front. Um, you know, the fragmentation that you'll see in some cities and communities, um, it bothers me. And so I, do, I truly believe that our, our, the best effort we can make is if we do it in unity with each other as, as, as the whole city moves forward together. And so um, I've done se several things in the community to try to unify the different parts, whether it's for um, something from the faith-based community or the marketplace or whatever the case may be. And so when Mayor Sievers made the choice to step down, um, the opportunity to come in and serve the city as mayor um, just made sense to me to further what um, was already, I was already passionate about. And so um, I don't see this, uh, it is, I know by title it's the mayor, but uh, by opportunity it's a chance to serve in a greater capacity. Very good. And you're, you're stepping into a council that's, uh, uh, there's some freshmen in there. You've yep. got two brand new counselors who've yep. never been on council before and some seasoned people are there as oh, well. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. On inauguration night, you actually talked about how you were honored to work with them. I watched mm -hmm. you shake their hands, which was really impressive to, mm -hmm. to see how you guys plan to, to bring all this together and work together. Tell mm -hmm. us what you see how you see our council moving forward. I know you're excited to work with them. I am. It's a great council. Um, and the new um, Preble Ramswell and Rodney Braden are amazing people. Um, deep history, Rodney especially, deep history in our, in our city. Uh, Preble brings an amazingly fresh voice to the council. And then you have, we have some, I'll call them some generals up there, some, some seasoned veterans up there on council that um, have a world of experience, both whether it's militarily, fishing, um, and all things in between. And so I think we're a diversified group, but I think the strongest thing we can do is although we represent different facets and we bring a different thing to the table, I think it's through that diversity we become stronger. And so as each of them share what's on their heart, I think we can formulate a better and stronger Destin. And so uh, I'm so honored to serve alongside those folks. It's just a great, great opportunity. Good, good. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a good answer. And I know, yeah. that, I know that that's real and we look yeah. forward to that too. Yeah. Um, Let's get into some of the objectives of the council, the mayor, the city as a whole, and maybe uh, just from your perspective, what are some of the positives going on in the city right now? Uh, well, uh, I think the city staff is one of the most amazing positives we have. Uh, I, we just came off the heels, uh, by, the, by the time this is aired, um, it may be a few weeks old, but off the heels of a devastating storm for our city, really of all of Northwest Florida. And I saw the city staff jump in, um, come in at odd hours, work late hours just to serve the city um, and it's a lot of thankless things they did uh, but I love that. I love seeing the city staff be empowered to serve the city the way they did and so I'm just honored by that. Um, I think our, fa our the family we have, the families in our city, the culture we have of family in our city is probably one of the strongest things um, at, our, uh, at our core. Um, if you look at the backs of the fishermen that our community was built on and how today we can honor them and how today we can actually live and build ourselves around them and what they started um, and, and I think the vision of that we all fall up underneath for the city is powerful. And so I think as we continue to uh, further a culture of family um, and through that recognizing that we all bring something different to the table but we foster a culture of honor in our city, 
um, amongst the people is a tremendous asset we have. And so I'd say, you know, our, the families, the, f the people, the individuals in our city are, are our greatest asset. Um, I think obviously our location, but where we are on the, uh, we're, God's planted us in Northwest Florida. It's just a beautiful, with a, with a harbor in the past, uh, is an amazing attribute that draws not only tourists, but locals alike. Um, and I think that the, really the culture of that family is the, is the strongest thing we can build off of. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, you mentioned that we, we're kind of in, in a beautiful place. We're hoping yeah. for a really positive, strong uh, tourist season, oh, yeah. which really drives our economy and, and gets our fishermen going and our retail folks uh, excited. So, yeah. so I think that that'll, that'll be a, that, that's a really th good thing we have to look forward to is, is a good season yeah. um, and, and a real positive attitude moving forward. Oh, absolutely. And I think if, you know, uh, one of the things I'm, I'm looking to implement um, amongst our real estate families called a, it's like a city impact group and really at the end of the day what I'm trying to uh, incorporate is just the heart of being of serving our guests well uh, because I think if we can in instill that in our community that re we honor who a person is and not whether or not and when they come into our city we celebrate who they are we want them you know a lot of communities talk about coming to have a family experience I want people to come here and experience family it's just a different culture and environment I want them to have when they come to our city and if we celebrate our guests and we celebrate our community, we keep it clean and we co-labor together, I think they would be drawn back to a city like ours versus maybe another coastal community that may have a lot of bells and whistles but may not have that DNA of family and of serving and honoring our guests. And so, um, you know, I'm so thankful for Ed Schrader, who's our new TDC director in Okaloosa County. I'm looking forward to working with him um, and really just uh, celebrating uh, the, the many beautiful parts and uh, different pieces of our city to honor our guests as they come into town. Very good. You know, you mentioned that experience, and if we can hit them right with that right off the oh, bat. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Very good, yeah. very good. Well, that is positive, and that's, oh, that's yeah. probably, you know, may basically where this city is headed. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about maybe some of the challenges. You mentioned um, uh, the, the storm we had. Mm -hmm. You know, we that's clearly have some, <laughs> some, some stormwater problems. Of course, yeah. this storm was an anomaly. We don't see that kind of rain. We never see anything like that. Yeah, there, there's areas that are deemed not in a flood zone that are flooded. Right. And so it's, uh, you know, I don't call it, you know if you call it a 100-year or 500-year storm, but it was a challenge. Mm -hmm. And um, we're working through that. Uh, you know, we, oh yeah. we, we're figuring some things out that we weren't able to figure out before. Sometimes you don't know until it happens. Right. And uh, like you said, our staff is really moving forward to, to, to uh, make sure that they can not only alleviate the issue now, but look forward to, to how to make this not happen again. Absolutely. You hope and pray it doesn't happen again, but you always want to learn from the challenges you go through so that next time you're prepared ahead of time, or at least you can maybe take them on from a different perspective because you learned the last time you went through it. Um, and I just... Our community has been fantastic in, in this challenge. I mean, our staff stepped up, each of the community members, I hear testimony after testimony of, and it's not, even unbeknownst to our staff that they're out there helping each other, they're loving each other, they're taking care of needs, they're buying groceries, they're, they're caring for ones that may be you know, hurting. Um, and I'll tell you, when you reach out your heart to a hurting heart in our community, I'd love to hear that. And I love that our community is so caring and connected with each other that they're not waiting on some, maybe some exterior or, or external um, groups to help them, they're starting with themselves. And I love that, that facing um, a major setback like we had in that storm, our citizens have risen up to say, you know, we can take care of ourselves and or each other. And I absolutely love that. We, they really have. We're seeing that right now. And again, yeah. that's, that's, that's a challenge, but that's also a positive. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Another challenge that is a positive on the back end is uh, something that the council is working through, and that's adopting or revising the comprehensive plan. Absolutely. Let's talk about that process a little bit and maybe yeah. what the comprehensive plan really is to the city. Comprehensive plan is kind of a footprint and um, a, a vision statement essentially for what the city will look like in the foreseeable future five to ten years out. Um, the city has done an amazing job over the last year to year and a half really uh, getting the word out and letting the community know hey this is coming we need your input we need your you know your, your wisdom you can bring to the table the city's had workshops um, and mm -hmm. I do like that we just had um, another community workshop last week. Uh, welcome to, we invited to the table, the developers, the residents, uh, those involved, the players um, that are in the game, please come and help us, give us your wisdom. Staff's got amazing wisdom, council's got amazing wisdom, but we may not have all the answers. We, our community is made up of amazing and gifted uh, developers and residents alike. Um, each have a say in what our city looks like in the foreseeable future. And so um, I'm excited about where this thing goes from here. I believe that you know, the, the workshop last week, one thing I think we got across is we want to hear from you. 
Um, and I think the council's getting that voice out to them, saying, hey, be part of this. Be part of the, the crafting of this thing so that when we go forward, we go forward um, as a unified voice. Um, I know at the end of the day, um, we may not uh, you know, please all parties at the table, um, uh, but we just can't because when you develop things and you look at a community and what you're trying to frame out, there's a lot of different opinions there. But I believe if we can find consensus along the way, then we can move forward together. Um, so it's a process that um, we're hoping to um, achieve and finish and complete a, a bulk of it in the near future. Mm -hmm. Some pieces of it may have to come lagging behind, but I'm looking forward to working through that as a community. Good. You know, you mentioned the bringing these people together in this cohesive effort with the council, the staff, and the community. The not just the not just the planning community, not just the builders, but also the residents. It's, it's a one Absolutely. unified voice of how we want to look. Absolutely. And and we're going to work through that. It's very yeah. diverse and it's very troubling, yeah. or it can be very tough. But it's, it's good to know that um, you guys are, have the attitude you have when you move forward through it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I kind of sense that with the council. I think, you know, there's um, some of them have been there for a term or maybe a term and a half, but still they recognize the importance of this comprehensive plan. They want to make sure we do it right. Because as I kind of put it out um, to them last week is, you know, a lot of the stuff that we'll decide through this comprehensive plan won't even come out of the ground. It could be four, six, or eight years. Mm -hmm. And so they may be off council at that time, but, you know, and I may be off mayor at that point in time, but I want to be honorable to our citizens as to what comes out of the ground because I kind of put it to them that there's different types of soils even around our, our nation, and certain things grow well in certain soils. It doesn't mean that something, and just because um, it, it's palatable or, or allowed in a community doesn't necessarily mean it's, it will grow. And so um, I want our council really to press into that and say, hey, listen, what we're, what we're drafting and scripting for this comprehensive plan Make sure it's, it's, there's a return, not only to those that are putting the seed in the ground to develop something nice for our community, but make sure there's also a yield to our community. Let there be a return on the community, both economically, socially, and environmentally. I think it's important that when we look at that through a comp comprehensive plan, that we, we give honor to that. Well, so. you certainly have the right attitude for this, and I think you're, <laughs> you're gonna take this in a direction that's positive for our, for our commercial environment our residential environment and and again for our city staff we just we we see the message we understand it and i think that involving the community with your attitude and the way the council's doing right now it will, will lend itself to a really good strong future and, and so. that's greatly appreciated thank you uh, we have a minute left so let's talk about um, something that's important to you and it's important to this city and that's the week of blessings coming oh, yeah. up in may tell Absolutely. tell us how that got started I'm excited about that, Doug. It started 11 years ago. This is our 11th year. Um, Captain Mike Parker, captains a boat called the Silver King. Um, he and I didn't know each other at the time, but we both went to Father Mike Hesse, who pastors the Church Emanuel Anglican Church, which is the main oversight for the blessing of the fleet. Um, and both had an idea of, of expanding that to the community. And so we now, um, we unify the faith-based community for a week's period of time and really just um, uh, celebrate our uh, VIPs in the community, our dignitaries in the community, um, fire chief, police chief, we just honor them. And the pastors do that. And I love to see that them rally, the body of Christ ra rallies, the community rallies, um, and it's coming up in our 11th year, um, the last week of May um, this year. Okay, good. The last week of May, week of blessings again, yep. it's a community event, yep. uh, several series of events, blessing yep. of the fleet, marketplace, yep, and, um, and, and all of that can be found online as well. You sure can, absolutely. Well, Mel, thank you for being here today. This has been Thanks. great. It's Thanks, really Doug. good to talk to you, and we look forward to talking to you again Thanks. on Honor the show. Honored to be here, Doug. Thanks so much. Very good. Thanks. Stay tuned for the city of Fort Walton Beach next. We also would like to thank you for watching this show in Okaloosa County coming up a little bit later. I'm Doug Rayner with the city of Destin, and we'll see you next time.